Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. I am still receiving questions about the Pro 1 and refilling it with modified PGI 29 cartridges. Now you have two choices. Modify one cartridge at a time out of your original cartridges that you receive with the printer. Now remember this printer is out of production. It's no longer being made or produced by Canon. And it's very, very rare to even find one new in box anymore. It's just scarce. But there's many of you who still own this printer and are going the refilling route. Now, there are some things that you need to keep in mind when you choose to do this. Unlike the Pro 10 PGI 72s, which are so easy to refill, requires zero modification, even easier than the Pro 100 because the Pro 100 does require a removal of the original factory fill ball. This printer does require a bit of work before you can start using its own original cartridges. Now keep in mind, and please, 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 if you value the life of your printer, do not fall for these compatible cartridges being sold from that big giant country in the East, okay? Be very careful with those. I don't know about now, but early on the chips were producing fatal errors on your printer, okay? B500, Bravo 500, not the B200, that has to do with the printhead. B500 would lock up your printer, and these cartridges are extremely cheaply produced, and they are not the same as your original cartridges. Take your original cartridge. It is reaching empty. Now, unlike a Pro 10 or a Pro 100, you can't really remove a cartridge from the carrier, the printhead carriage, that is, and just take hours, you know, modifying it and refilling it and then putting it back in. You can't afford to do that, but the Pro 1 will forgive you. You can unlock the cartridge door, remove the cartridge, leave it open, okay? You have to remove the chip. Now, there's a process to do this. If you want to do it correctly, I have videos. Go back to my PGI 29 playlist and take a look at the process. I shot it close up so you know exactly what you need to do. Now, one thing that you absolutely need to do because the replacement chips simply do not fit the original compartment right here. See that little slot in the middle? The back of the new chip that you will be using has a big globule of black resin. It will not fit there. The original OEM chips, which are not meant to be reused, do not have that rear electronic section covered with resin. It's bare, so it does fit flat, but not the single-use Chinese chips that you're going to receive from companies such as Precision Colors or others who are selling them. You can get these through many sources overseas now in order to make that chip fit you have to carve out a little circular space a little negative space if you will to allow that globule of of resin i don't have a chip with me here to show you but maybe i can take this one off here we go i got it i had it taped on you see that little black globule of resin? That's what keeps it from fitting flat on your cartridge. So you have to carve it out. Now, I have a milling machine, so I'm able to do this extremely accurately. No problem when I do it. But, you know, who knows? Maybe you might have a problem. So what I was doing in the past was I was getting empties from many sources Removing the chip properly, remodifying the space. In other words, using my milling machine with a jig to remove enough material to allow that chip to sit flat. Now, how can you do that? Well, Dremel tool, very carefully. All you need to do is carve out enough space for that little fat globule of resin to fit, to allow the chip to sit flat. Now, you could conceivably just basically cut off all of the welded posts, the two welded posts, remove the old chip, pop the new one, 
and a little piece of tape will hold it in place. Believe me, there is no stress being applied to this chip. In fact, the contacts simply keep the chip down. But what I will suggest is something to help it along. Maybe a little tiny bit of double sticky tape on that little black resin globule that will keep it securely attached and it allows you to remove it very easily afterwards. So here's the process after all of this. If I haven't scared you enough, I hope not. It's not really that hard. Once you modify that one cartridge, it's good forever. Okay, unless you actually damage the cartridge doing that. So you only have to worry about this one time. Now, you are running a full cartridge. And what does that mean? You have a new chip. It's going to report full. That chip expects the cartridge to also be filled. Now, have a look. We have an internal ink bag. Okay? This ink bag is collapsed at this moment. So you will use the refilling tip that Precision Colors provides you. A syringe. You're going to pull back. Create a vacuum. Load your syringe with 39 milliliters of ink. And inject that ink. Try not to have any air in your syringe okay that's easy to do when you're loading ink try not to have any air load the whole amount you're going to insert it you're going to press press and keep that pressure i don't mean 10 pounds of pressure a couple of pounds of pressure and inject that ink you will feel it you will hear this plastic moving okay expanding weigh it it should weigh 84 grams full with the chip installed. If it weighs 80 grams, then you either have 4 ml of air in there or you have not loaded enough ink. So extract to make sure that you're sucking back nothing but liquid ink so no air is there. In fact, do this. Pull back, get any air out. Now you're getting solid ink. Put that back in your bottle and then weigh it. If it weighs 79 grams, well, guess how much ink you have to add? About 5 ml. An ml of ink weighs about a gram, give or take. It depends on the density of each liquid that you're working with. So 79 grams of total weight, that means you have to add 5 grams of ink. In other words, close to 5 ml. Inject that, weigh it again. 84.2 that's fine don't worry about it remove it syringe and tip insert it into your printer close the lid you are good to go okay the next time one of them goes low or empty process it the same way remove the chip drill out that space i use a quarter inch diameter drill bit okay I have a drill press. I have a milling machine. Very, very accurate. Use a Dremel tool with a round uh, ball type end mill and just carve out, test that chip. Once you get it to sit flat, that is all you have to do. Don't worry about what it looks like. But what you need to do is not harm the two little aligning posts. Those are still required to be there for you to be able to pop that chip in place it sort of will keep it kind of locked, not securely, but at least aligned properly so that the chip reading contacts on the printer can contact accurately with your chip. Otherwise, you're going to have card recognition problems. So again, it's not something for the weak of heart, let's just say. I'm sorry, I just don't have any more of these sets available. Okay, I don't. They have become extremely rare. And that's, that's the problem. Also, another bad thing about this printer, and you may be asking, well, Jose, why are you doing this you know, video on the Pro 1? Because there's still people out there that own them. This printer, once the internal waste ink pads reach full, even the service center cannot find replacement pads for it. Can you believe that? Well. Hopefully, they will last a long time. They are quite huge, as is the printer. So hopefully, that will not be the case, you know, at least not in the near future anyway for you guys that are refilling. Remember, 
60 hour time limit, 120 hour time limit, 240 and 480 for those mandatory cleaning cycles. They will happen. So, you know, a lot of people have problems uh, understanding the concept of these cleaning cycles. I'll try to nail it down this time finally. I will print something today and it is preceded by a cleaning cycle. So whatever time that was today, the new timer begins counting until the next time I print something and it has succeeded 60 hours. I could be printing every hour on the hour, but once I hit 60 hours worth of time between the very last clean cycle it produced and now say 60 hours on the dot or 61 hours, and I've been printing like a mad dog before that, it's still going to produce a clean cycle, okay? That's what happens. Now I could just not print and maybe 120 hours later I'll print, it will produce a clean cycle and then it starts all over again. Once you exceed 60 hours and anything beyond that, it will run a cleaning cycle and progressively larger cleaning cycle. It has to do that, unfortunately. There's nothing we could do about it, okay? Um, I have a feeling that this wasn't one of Canon's greatest creations, if you will. This is this thing is a killer of a printer, but it has the same problems. It has the same type of maintenance requirements that the Canon Pro 1 also did. All right, so low, remove the cartridge or empty, remove the cartridge, remove the chip, modify that chip compartment, put the new chip on there, fill it to 84 grams total weight, okay, pop it back into the printer. That is it. What was that, four steps? I believe it was. All right, that is it. I do hope that any of you who still have this printer realize that once it is done, meaning, you know, those internal pads are full, unless you're really lucky and you're in a very large populated area where a local service center may have access to these internal pads, that'll be the end of that. You'll have to upgrade to something else. You know me, I tell it like it is. I am the most honest guy out there in the internet, I guarantee you, okay, when it comes to this type of subject matter. All right, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, of course. Hit that bell notification, and then ask it to notify you when I upload something. That way you'll keep abreast of anything I upload, all the new stuff, including maybe even a drone video. How about that? Thank you so much. Happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.